When you think of the world's best airlines, odds are Japanese carriers come to mind. I often rave about ANA and my love for them on this channel, which I know has left many of you thinking, Dan, what about Japan Airlines? Having flown them about half a dozen times, I can honestly say economy class is their most impressive cabin. Obviously, relatively speaking. Their business class has good seats, but a lacking soft product compared to ANA. Then we have their first class, an extremely aspirational product for many who are into aviation. With the introduction of their new A350 seats, there's a lot of excitement about the future of their first class. But what about those passengers flying their classic seat on the Boeing 777? Well, come with me for the ultimate Japan Airlines first class experience. Welcome back to the worst of the best, my three video series where I am comparing the worst first class products at some of the world's best airlines. I've already done Singapore Airlines and Emirates, which you can check out on my channel. And today, finally, it's time for gel. After 24 hours in the always fun Tokyo, which we vlogged on Oscar and Dan and can be watched in the card now, it's time to head to Tokyo Haneda by far the most convenient airport in Tokyo. While I landed at Narita on Singapore Airlines a few days prior, I am thrilled to not have to journey all the way out there again for my departure. Today I'm joined by Oscar as well, which makes it all the more fun. Japan Airlines, like most One World Airlines, allow One World Emerald members to use their first class check-in. That means it's quite a lot busier than first class check-in at many other airlines. Nonetheless, there was no wait and we even got to speed through fast track security before heading to the Japan Airlines first class lounge. I've never been to the Japan Airlines first class lounge at Haneda before, so I'm excited to check that out and oh boy, it does not disappoint. Anytime I visit a new first class lounge, I'm super grateful when they have maps since trying to find all the amenities can otherwise be quite the challenge. Most amenities are still closed due to COVID, yes, in the fall of 2023, but naturally the main lounge area is open with plenty of seating and best of all, stunning views of the traffic outside. There's a tiny buffet, but most of the food can be ordered by a QR code. It's unusual there isn't a more formal restaurant, but being Japan, they've figured out the niftiest system for placing orders since your phone basically turns into a Japan Airlines lounge machine. You can book showers, see the lounge map, and place your food order all in this app that's not an app. The menu is really fun and I'm shocked to see there's a dedicated plant-based section with plant-based sushi. What? Plot twist of the century. I order some pieces of those along with the pasta and while I wait, I get to watch the sushi bar, which I have loved doing ever since I was a kid. The food eventually arrives and while the sushi and pasta are both good, the highlight ironically is this ginger. I love pickled ginger to begin with, but this is without a doubt the best I've ever had since it's much crunchier and spicier than usual. My favorite part of the lounge is the Red Suite, a retro travel style section of the lounge with old airplane models, a gaming section, and this beautiful champagne room. At 10.30, 15 minutes prior to boarding, we decide to head to the gate. All right, it is time to board. Our Japan Airlines Boeing 777-300 ER is patiently awaiting at gate 149, ready for the six hour flight down to Bangkok. Japan Airlines uses the 777-300 ER as the backbone of its premium long haul fleet and the configuration certainly shows it. With just 147 economy seats, this beast has 40 premium economy seats, 49 business class seats, 
the Apex Suite, and eight first class seats in a one to one configuration. The first class cabin is standard as far as first class goes, and today I've selected seats two Kilo and two Golf for Oscar and me. Now let's calculate the lavatory ratio. There are two lavatories and eight potential passengers, so one is shared by at most four people. That's obviously fantastic and there will not be any way to use the toilet regardless of how full the cabin is. Are you ready to see what this looks like in person? Let's go! <laughs> At 11.51, six minutes behind schedule, we are invited to board. At the door, it seems like a curtain has fallen down, so the crew is understandably busy trying to fix that. I quickly get welcomed and enter the cabin, which I must say looks quite a lot nicer in person than on camera. Yes, it looks retro, but that's part of the fun. Oscar's center seat already has the privacy partition raised, which is nice. He won't be able to see his neighbor, so privacy is not a concern. Likewise, my home 2 Kilo already feels quite private, given the slightly staggered configuration so you can't really see anyone else. The seat funnily enough also gives me leather recliner vibes. Looking at the armrest, I feel like, oh, is this where Joey and Chandler's recliners went after the show went off air? We have quite the welcome kit waiting for us. This is sort of a thing in first class, but it never gets old. I don't mind Christmas coming early. Boarding is over so fast, I barely have time to settle in, so we'll talk about the seat more after takeoff. The pre-departure service consists of a rather discombobulated welcome from three different cabin crew members. We'll talk more about the service later too. They bring me a hot towel and a choice of orange juice or champagne, and I should note it's very rare not to have a wider choice in first class, but I don't mind, we're about to jet off to Thailand. As we take off from Tokyo, I reflect on mine and Oscar's incredible 24 hours there that were not planned by us, but completely by artificial intelligence. Obviously taking the time and stress out of planning thanks to today's video sponsor, Magic. Magic is a free AI travel assistant that helps you plan your trip, find a place to stay, and answer any questions you may have about your trip while you're there or while you're planning. Better yet, Magic allows you to book hotels and their hotel filters let you search pretty much anything. Whether you want a gym, you wanna be close to a specific location, you want hotels under $200, you name it, Magic has it. And then they compile what people from all over the internet are saying about that hotel into nice color-coded boxes so you can know if that's the right place for you or not. Once you've booked your hotel, which you can do through Magic with no fees whatsoever, they can help you plan your entire higher itinerary for your trip. What's so amazing is that Magic takes into account your preferences, your dietary restrictions. So basically you can plan the perfect trip for you just like we did with our 24 hours in Tokyo when we wanted to go deeper since this is our fourth or fifth visit. So click the link at the top of the description to check out Magic. It is completely free and can help you make your next trip just perfect and sprinkle a little magic on top. The crew on this flight are lovely, but unfortunately they seem so uncomfortable speaking English. Which obviously wouldn't be such a big deal in Japan, but on an international flight you need to be able to communicate with all your passengers. They also ask what name they can call me an Oscar by and proceed to practice my name, Dan, but funnily enough never use it once during the flight. That's not to say the crew is bad by any means, they're smiley, super helpful, and would be fantastic on almost any other airline. It's just that the expectations from service and refinement in Japan are so extremely high. 
Now let's look around a little. Along the windows, we have more than enough space. We have a body seat by our feet so we can dine with a companion. We have in-flight magazines. We have seat controls and a remote that controls the extremely limited in-flight entertainment. More on that shortly. I want to show you this leather binder that contains some interesting things. Firstly, the free Wi-Fi. Jal's in-flight Wi-Fi is impressively high speed among the fastest I've used, which is even better considering it's free. Dining is really the main event on Japanese airlines, so let's check out the aubergine bed menu. Obviously, it's not aubergine, but that's just what I read every time I see this. Just like on Emirates and Singapore Airlines, Japan Airlines has a menu that you could spend all flight reading. The Japanese options are intricate, and it's funny because you just know 95% of white people ordering this have no idea what they're going to get, and that includes me. The Western menu on Japanese airlines is usually best avoided, and that was confirmed by a viewer I met on this flight who tried the Western menu and said it was a grave mistake. When it comes to drinks, the selection is massive. I love that they have all types of unique drinks you'd never find anywhere else, like this tea that's apparently so fancy they serve it in this type of glass. While we wait for the service to start, I line up all my amenities. Like everywhere in Japan, Jal provides slippers. Then we have toiletries from Shiseido, I think that's how you pronounce it, an expensive Japanese skincare brand. There's a his and hers version of this as you can see. The amenity kit is incredibly well stocked. I cannot think of another country that loves its in-flight amenities more than Japan. Stay tuned for the meal service coming up next. As the meal begins and this almost bush is served, my hopes following the impressive lounge food quickly fade. This vegetarian oriental meal isn't looking very oriental, nor is it looking very first class. Next up, my starter is served. Okay, this is really bad. I get so stressed that I rush to the galley asking if I can quote unquote take a photo of the food. They think I'm trying to order the food so it takes a while to explain no, I just want to see the regular food which makes them even more confused but we all share a good laugh. So this guys is the Japanese appetizer from the menu. It's funny these five items get such thorough explanations on the menu yet in reality they can literally be eaten in one or two bites. Back in my seat the depression starts to sink in when this second appetizer is served. Japan Airlines what is going on here? They recently announced they're going to improve their vegan offering, yet yeah, it's pretty clear why that's necessary. Meanwhile in the galley, the crew show me this miso soup with a big baseball sized, I'm assuming fish ball inside. There's also what must be a mighty expensive wagyu beef and caviar plate. Hmm, caviar versus half an inch of dry tortilla. Finally, the main, some sort of mock meat meatballs in a sauce that tastes suspiciously Swedish. This makes me so excited because it looks like a slight step up from the rest of the food, but the flavor is what's a huge letdown this time and the rice, crazily enough, is rock solid. The first course from the Japanese menu doesn't look especially appetizing to me either, but hey, that's just my opinion. Finally, dessert. Compare this to the desserts I got on the two other flights in this series and you'll see what a disappointment this is. The regular dessert, this coconut mochi, is also quite basic looking for first class if you ask me. In-flight catering is always a hit or miss, but I'm surprised just how much of a miss this is. And it's a serious step down from the food I've had on a and what else is there to do but change into pajamas and get comfy? We've still got three and a half hours to go, guys. I head to the lavatory, which is spacious and so sleek and modern, which makes me think, why can't the cabin look like this? There are even more amenities in here as well as, oh my gosh, a bidet. Perfect. Turns out Jal's first class pajamas is not only so comfortable, but looks kind of nice. I could almost walk off the plane in this and have it pass for a tracksuit. Back in my seat, the crew has prepared my bed which looks very inviting. There's a choice between a soft or firm side of the mattress pad, good call on her end giving me the soft one. 
even with the soft pad, the bed is definitely on the hard side. And what surprises me most as I lay down is the pillow. This is luscious if I ever saw it. <laughs> There are no individual air vents on gel, which is something to keep in mind for longer flights too, because the duvet is hot, the pajamas is hot, the cabin is hot, you're gonna be hot. During and after the meal, I've been watching Chicago. I love that they have Bose headphones and just wish there was more content to enjoy them with. Out of the very limited number of TV shows, most of them only have one episode. The movie selection isn't very big either. You might think, why is he not showing the entertainment on the screen instead? Because I can't, it can only be controlled from here. For the next 60 minutes, I work in bed until suddenly the crew comes by asking if I want the pre-landing meal. What now? I've never been on a daytime flight, first class or not, that's under six hours and received two full meals. Again, I asked the crew for a look at the regular pre-landing snack, which looks great, so I'm dreading to see what sad slob they managed to bring me. Well, what do you know? This time the meal is presented nicely and tastes amazing. It's sort of an eggplant mapu tofu. Why couldn't the previous meal have been like this? I don't know. I also appreciate the smaller portion given how much I've eaten. Shortly after we start our descent, the crew all come by to say thank you and goodbye. They also hand out this chocolate. Getting some sort of fancy gift like this is always a great way to round off a flight. So in conclusion, besides the economy, I've honestly never had a flight on Japan Airlines where I've been blown away. I think it's because some people hype them up so much that you expect perfection, while in reality, for me, they're more on par with Korean Air, Asiana, and possibly even Chinese mainland carriers in many aspects. That means they're good, but they're not quite the caliber of ANA. Comparing this flight to Emirates or Singapore Airlines 777 First Class, it's obvious to me that I would choose the other two airlines over Japan Airlines any day. On that note, if you're in the mood for a positive video and you haven't already checked it out, make sure you check out my Singapore Airlines review from this series. If you want more in-depth aviation content, of course, check out my podcast, On Air with Dan and Alex. So as I say goodbye and fly safe, here's a snippet from the latest episode. Plot twist. We're coming to Doha today. BA cancelled our flight and we're rerouting with an overnight. So I yep. put, hey, wait, what? <laughs> he put, I'm in Kuwait. I'm supposed to fly Dubai, Kuwait, Heathrow, Oslo, Frankfurt, Nairobi. I was like, huh? <laughs> and he said, but of course BA have cancelled the Kuwait Heathrow overnight. So now we're screwed. So in my head, all I can hear <laughs> is that once again, British Airways have delivered the mandate of the people to yes. ensure Dan has additional <laughs> content for YouTube. Thank and, you, British uh, Airways.